All right, test, test. I am here. Hey, yo, I can hear you loud and clear. Can you also hear me loud and clear? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. Let me get a little sip of water here. Any Anything, Tim Livingston, right? Anything else I need to know, pronunciation? Uh, you got it, Tim Livingston. Syntax stuff. The one. No, no, you're perfect. <laughs> right, let me get a little sip of water. I'm going to do the uh, you know the classic intro, and then we'll hop in. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Talking About Life podcast. I am your host, Ian Lipkowski. On Twitter, my handle is at K-O-W-S-K-Y underscore E-T-H, as in the first three letters of Ethereum. My my E-N-S is Kowski.eth. We always start the show by thanking God, energy, the world, source, universe, whatever you want to call it, if you believe in something bigger than you, we thank that force for providing whatever magic gets the guest to the show, gets me here on time, gets all the connections of the world to align. So across states and waters, sometimes we're living in real time, having a conversation. That's the magic of technology. But we also thank God because I believe in God. And, you know, I believe that's the foundation of the world. You don't have to believe it, but it's just my belief. We also start the show by thanking the guests. So thank you very much to Tim for coming on the show. We got Tim Livingston is our guest today. His Twitter handle is at VectorBotTim. That is at V-E-C-T-O-R-B-O-T-T-I-M. His Twitter bio reads, artist, optimist, teacher, creator of VectorBots, which I'm sure we will dive into passionately. Uh, But Tim, you know, if you want to give any more bio, you can or you can't, whatever you feel comfortable with. But, you know, how are you doing today? How are you doing in general? And then we'll hop into your project. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, it says artist, optimist, teacher, creator of VectorBots. So thank you for pointing that out. I, um, yes, I am like an eternal optimist. I like to, I like to think um, there's a lot of positivity in the world and I want to be a part of, you know, bringing that out to the open. Uh, I am an artist and I am a teacher. So I'm trying to combine all of those things uh, with VectorBots. So it's a really great introduction. And uh, obviously VFriends, Maxi, big fan of um, Gary Vee's project and um, the community that he created. And I'm just sort of taking his blueprint and, and trying to, you know, carve my own path here in the metaverse. Yeah. And I love to hear it. I love to see it. You know, I follow you and I watch what you do. I like your post. I like what you're doing out there. For the sake of the conversation, we may have listeners that know nothing about VectorBots, and there's things I know I don't know about VectorBots. So frame it in a way where, you know, if someone knows nothing, you're explaining it to them for the first time. What What is VectorBots? Okay, so if you've never been exposed to VectorBots, I would say, um, is this person exposed to NFTs? They know they know all about NFTs, That's, correct? Yeah. Let's not explain Let's NFTs. Assume that. Okay. Well, I'll right. have to get that. Another podcast. We'll just do VectorBots. Sure. Okay. VectorBots is um, is a way to tell human stories in a robot world. And the reason that that's important is because it's hard to tell stories from your point of view and be vulnerable that way. The, the things and the traumas that you've gone through in your life, sometimes people take those, they sharpen them, and then they, then they stab you with them to make you feel bad. Um, and it's just the way that people... Um, they guard themselves. They don't want to put themselves out there so much. So what the bots allow is for um, a vehicle to talk about subject matter that might be a little bit difficult to talk about um, and challenges specifically uh, that may be hard for people to deal with in their life. And hopefully with the stories of the bots, we're able to really um, tell these stories and also give some solutions and some coping mechanisms and some and some understanding that uh, number one, you're not alone. And number two, um, there's people to help you, right? It, well, I guess it's number one still. Um, but the number two is um, that it's okay to feel this way. And um, number three is just empowering people to to be themselves. So really the VectorBots is just a vehicle to sort of um, scale my personality, scale what I was doing in the classroom, um, much in the same way that Gary has done with VFriends. Now, Tim, my understanding is, as you've said, VectorBots is a storytelling NFT. And as you've said also, stories tell lessons, impart values. 
with either one or more, however you want to describe it, examples, you know, what's maybe one of the stories of one of the vector bots and like, what is the lesson to be learned there? All right. Very good question. So let's just take um, the alpha and beta example. So the, all the names of the characters are based off of the, 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 you know, alpha, bravo, uh, Charlie, Delta, the, I don't know what you would call it. I think it's, it's got a certain name, but anyway, that very alphabet language yeah. for doing first letter exactly. things. I don't know if that's yeah, the official that's name. The, I think that is the official name, actually, now that you say that, Thank you. it rings a bell. Uh, but like November and Whiskey, like all of those are the characters in Ox. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> and the only character name that's different than that is the character Beta, which um, was created as a Bravo, a twin brother to Alpha, and uh, the story here is that Beta never felt like a, a Bravo. And so Beta reinvented themselves into Beta Bot, which looks completely He didn't different. identify as a Bravo. Was born a Bravo, didn't identify, identifies as a Beta. I love that. Is that. Am I getting that right? That's exactly correct. So you can understand the types of subject matter um, that would you could talk about with this, right? Uh, identity and, and dealing with um, that type of thing. Uh, so those are deep subjects that we can talk about with a with a robot. Um, another example would be like Tango. He's got ADHD and he dances around. He's got like create, picture him as like Tasmanian Devil as a as a robot. And so like um, you know, I think myself, I can relate to that energy a lot. And so um, that's like you know, how does Tango deal with having all this energy all the time? And what do other bots say when he's dancing in the middle of the square or wherever? And how does he deal with that commentary and things like that? I love it. I love I love the angles you're going with. Like that first example you gave, I think just shows, you know, if it's revealing of the project, which it is, the wide spectrum you go to with the goal of inclusivity and all the different topics and people you're going to cover. So you feel like no one gets left out, I believe. I was someone growing up, you know, I was always that kid picked last, not picked at all at recess. I always felt left out for one reason or another. And, you know, it's it's good for me to hear because I want to be that hero that wasn't there for me as a kid for other people. I want to inspire other people to do the same. The more people that do that, the better childhoods people are going to have because even if it's not a parent or there's something going on at home, maybe they'll find another positive role model in their life. Maybe they'll find you. Maybe they'll find vector bots. So, you know, am I getting that right? Would you agree you're kind of this like lighthouse or this beacon, you know, if I could be poetic with the language to say, hey, if you feel like you're different and maybe, you know, you didn't find the right box or maybe you don't believe people belong in boxes, but whatever the fuck, come on over here. We're, we're, you know, welcoming everyone and we're sensitive and we're inclusive. That's exactly right. And it's also to be able to like gain perspective for myself and, and like rely on the community to help me tell their story because, you know, I'm just, I'm just like a 40 year old white guy with limited perspective on life and experiences across the world. And just being a female is a completely different experience than being a male. And I need, I need strong females to help me tell those stories. So it's, it's, it's a, not just my story that's being told. It's like, um, it's, it's a community effort and I'm trying to get feedback on different things. Um, for instance, when I created the India bot, um, like the way that the, the, the elephant's trunk is left, left or right, like has significance in the culture. And so, like, you really need to be mindful of all those different things when you're creating um, something that does represent multiple, you know, things like that. And I'm just one white guy. Like I said, it's I can't speak for a lot of these different um, viewpoints. So it, the community and relying on them to help has been like a really a great thing. So um, right now, I just actually before I got into this call, I was on a call with a um, high school class where uh, it's a creative writing English class where they've taken all my vector bots and the my short bios that I have on them that are in OpenSea and they're creating stories uh, and writing. Um, they wanted to know about relationships and, and and different things about the about the world. So it was really fun to to have, you know, different takes on these robots. They're really kind of up to interpretation, right? When if you mint a vector bot, I'd hope that you'd make some story up for it, right? And it's like this thing that's um special to you that's what i hope for give me one second sorry hold on how dare you <laughs> sorry. No, well, you're waiting. Someone Shout out to my house sorry two seconds okay i'm back so let me uh let me ask you this so 
how do how do those stories make it into the project? Like you were detailing that. I don't know the exact process. And I love that, by the way, that you're involving the perspectives of the community and you're bringing people's like voices in. You're bringing their stories in. I love the story about the classroom full of kids. Um, that was with was that with teacher Katie? No, actually, this is with another teacher that I worked with in North Carolina. Another teacher. Yeah. I thought instance with that. Oh, it's a teacher you work with, so yep. it's local. Yeah. Well, no, no. It was, when I was in North Carolina, I worked with them. Um, so I, yeah, I've worked at a couple schools, uh, high schools and, uh, one in North Carolina and two down here in Florida. So I'm, I want to leverage those relationships when I, you know, do my 55 school tour for, for vector box. But yeah, it's all about like, Love that's it. how I will tell the story when I go, you know, it'll, I'll tell the story through the website and I'll tell the story when I'm like in person and really, I hope to build it out over time. Like, just like, just like Z friends. Like it's a the IP good IP takes a long time to develop and and create, and when Walt Disney drew you know Steamboat Mickey, it wasn't the Mickey Mouse that we know now. Um, didn't have that story, so it was like you know really the vector bats are just a vessel for for anything. And right now it's going to be like education, social emotional awareness. So yeah, yeah, the Steamboat Mickey that's like the VF one, like before he got well, his yeah, uh, the, glow up. Kind the VF one was actually but, um, like the but, rabbit. What I whatever say it again Sorry. he's got an oswald rabbit that he created that was before mickey even oh wow i don't even know about oswald yeah. rabbit that'll have to google i'm a disney fan i don't know all the secrets that was i know first, there's like a bunch uh, he, that was his first like character and he was working for somebody and they um because he was working for somebody at the time they took the they took the idea he ended up buying it back like he bought the rights to his own drawing back later on after he made big success with disney but yeah he had this oswald rabbit and uh he had to make another one. He came up with Mickey Mouse. I would have bought it back too. But uh, okay, so here's the question I'm driving at here. So what is like, how much does the community influence the process and how? Like, obviously there was this, you know, example with your friend who was a teacher in North Carolina. And that was like, I feel like probably kind of a special thing. But like, you know, when you're bringing in, you know, perspective from India, perspective uh, from women, do you just like you know, put a message out on Twitter, you, you tweet out to the Discord, is there like a page where people could volunteer to contribute? Like, what is your process for kind of bringing people in who want to come in? So yes, that's a great question. I have a Discord, I've closed it off just because I want it to be really safe for the people that are in there. There's like, a, there's like 200 folks in there. And when I was creating the art um, back in 2021, I was iterating these characters and coming up with the process. I was, I was like, what kind of character, you know, what kind of shapes would this character have? What kind of character characteristics should this one have so it was an ongoing conversation on twitter um instagram and in the discord so and then just having conversations with folks about you know what these characters should represent and how they should be um, presented uh, my wife's a school psychologist my sister's a school psychologist and so i i leaned on them earlier on to like really try to get some perspective on so you know what kind of um traits would be important to have uh and, and things like that I love to hear it. And then let me just kind of touching back for a second. I, I meant to ask you this. The the kids that um put in, are, are they sending all their stories to you? Like, are, were you going to rip, like, read or skim some of those? Will some of that maybe make it, like, you know, diffused through osmosis in somewhere? Or, like, that's kind of like, you know, the teacher's got to grade those, so she needs the papers kind of thing. Yeah, it's a, it's just a creative writing um, exercise. And I told them that I'm willing to use any sort of, ideas that they come up with and implement them into the story. You know, I think it's just, it's the IP is so new. I mean, just, I mean, look at like the rare robot character with the friends, right? We don't really know anything about it yet. I still love it um, because I've created my own idea about what it is and what it represents. And so that's kind of like the idea here, you, you, you know, just like if you have a, a dead fella or, or something else that uses your PFP, and you kind of develop this online persona that is kind of like you, but it's it's you online, and it's like, you know, um, that's what I really kind of hope for is when when it's all minted that people really dive into the story of their own bot and create their own stories within the, you know, within the framework that I've created, and so that's really you know the end game there. But um, for them, it's just an exercise in like creative writing and taking something that's an idea to try and develop a whole world. Um, for me, it, it's asking great questions like, what are the age of these bots? What do they eat? What, um, do they have any traditions? What's their universe like? What time frame it is, right? So all these creative writing questions that they're asking me is actually the questions that I need answered for the lore and for the, 
for the bots. So it's it's a great um, back and forth. It's just really iterating what these things are going to be, um, you know, in the years to come. Yeah, and again, I, I can't say enough how much I love the way you're incorporating the community. You know, every project has a different perspective on it. And, you know, I respect everybody's way to do their own thing. You know, I'm not you. You do what feels right to you. But what I do love to see is the inclusivity. Like I said, it's just you're you're open to anything and it's not a guarantee. It's not a promise, but it's like, hey, my ears open. I'm listening. You could you could float this by me and it may or may not get in, but I'll definitely hear you out. So I think that uh, makes people feel really involved and it, it builds a stronger sense of community and ownership and partnership. Um, speaking of ownership, I saw recently, you know, you were posting a bunch about all the different mint phases of vector bots. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, actually, it's very confusing. Um, but really, everything is like fives in this project. And so there's going to be five phases of minting. Um, the, the first phase is happening now. I basically creating uh, the last series that I'm going to create in the OG collection. And um, what that'll give you is I'll, it's a promise of me to mint 55 bots from the contract when I get it going in May, um, which is about 60 days. So it's a promise for, for me to mint 55 bots to your wallet of your choice. Uh, and you also get that PFP bot from the original collection. And you also get to choose a color for the background uh, trait of the generative. So um, I've made, I think I've made three, I've sold one, a couple of people said they wanted me to make colors. I'm just waiting on their color choices. But um, yeah, the one that I that sold today was a mystic lilac. So there'll be a mystic lilac in the generative collection and I will mint 55 bots to their wallet before anybody else can. It'll be like a open, it'll be like, you know, the whales, <laughs> the, they call it the VCs of the project, I guess. Uh, but really they're, you know, it's, it's, they're not really going to have like, control over what happens but i do want to use them as a way to get feedback because you know it's 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 not one person it's a it's a democracy type thing and so i want to definitely do what's best for the community what i really want to do is make sure the community wins um and in order to do that it's going to take um you know really strategic mint and so i think getting 10 percent minted right off the bat here in the first week or so um is a huge step in that direction if you're trying to get on in this deal now, what is um like the ETH to USD or what is the cost of that? I think it's like $800 ish, depending on gas. So 0.55 ETH, which if I'm looking is $855 and 35 cents. So yeah, but you, you know, it, if, if you do the math, it, it'll be roughly 0 0.01 ETH per vector bot that you receive from me. And now, and then if you're not getting it on this deal and you wait until they all come out, mm -hmm. there's a, am I understanding right, there's a second phase where you could still get like, just like one of the uh, new ones? Yes, 100%. So um, on the anniversary of VFriends, second year anniversary, um, I'm going to be launching to the public. So there'll be a, there'll be a Jedi period of minting. If you own a vector bot, we're going to double your your vector bots right so if you buy i think i'll just do it just in general if you buy one you'll get two if you buy two you get four um if you own one from the original collection and that'll be open earlier so from may 1st till may 5th you'll be able to do that and then there'll be a pre-mint spot for five different communities uh so if you own any v friends if you own any dead fellas or avastars or there'll be five different communities then you'll get 24 hours access to the to the mint and then May 5th, it'll be open and then it'll be open for 55 days and then we're going to close the mint and then that's it. So the fifth phase is closing the mint. I just want to make sure that all the funds are set up and I know exactly what I'm working with when I go on tour to the 55 schools. Love it. So if you're listening and that was a lot of information, sure was. if you didn't get it the time, definitely just like, you know, rewind it. Like this is a recorded space. You could come back to this. You could, you know, you could reach out. You could ask maybe someone who is in here a question, but probably the easiest is, you know, to be uh, self-sufficient and just kind of rewind back and listen to it again. And you get all the information that plus you could check out, you know, Tim's Twitter, his pages. He's constantly tweeting about it. There's all these different posts explaining it. So if you are interested, you know, definitely you could get in. Um, now seems like a decent time. Seems like a lot's going on, you know, there's all these different phases. There's these different benefits. You're still kind of like early. You're not like the earliest, but you're like earlier than the next phase kind of thing. So I think that's a relatively sweet spot to get in if it's on your mind. Um, Tim, 
before I ask you a different question, is there anything else, like anything I'm not thinking of to ask or I'm not considering that you feel like, oh, like people need to know this about VectorBots? Well, if anyone's questioning whether or not VectorBots can be successful in the space, I would tell them that VectorBots LLC has been around for a little while and I've been working with, you know, some of the biggest events in the space, NFT NYC and NFT Miami Week. And I've decided that, you know, time it's time for me to, to do my own thing. So um, I've got a lot of experience working with some really, really talented people. And I learned a lot working with them. Um, if <laughs> I, I don't think I would have been successful if I launched VectorBots a year ago. I think that I am ready to, to let this thing loose. And it's just been in my gut and in my heart, and I just got to put it out there. So I would say anybody who's feeling that type of way, is, uh, take a chance on yourself. You never know, you know where it's going to lead. Love to hear it. Got the uh, ambitious angel vibe going on. You're going for it. The motivated monster. We're feeling it. For those that don't know, those are V Friends characteristics. Y'all better learn them. Um, one last thing, actually, I'll ask you about the project. Do you have any plans or open uh, open availability or open mind to, um, you know, I don't know when, but maybe one day, one day down the line, like doing any games with the robots, that kind of thing, or like a coin or like any of the other, like, I don't know, flashy bullet point, like web three things, or this is really about knowledge, value, storytelling, like you're less about the gimmicks or like it's, it's focused on like knowledge and uh, passion at the core. And then at one point, maybe you're open to that, but the point isn't to like throw out the gimmicks. The point is to, to deliver value or is it mix of both? Like what, you know, what, what would you say to that? I would say that the, the most important thing is to make attainable goals. Um, the, the attainable goals for VectorBots will be traveling to 55 schools, delivering free 55 lessons to whoever goes to VectorBots.io and building the IP that way. Um, I don't want to say VectorBots is going to make a game, VectorBots is going to do this and that and the other thing. I'm going to say that this Mint will fund people's, like, it'll directly help and fund a scholarship. It will directly help you know, teachers and students with social emotional learning. And then what comes after that, um, I think there's a lot to build on, but to try to decide that now would be foolish because the literally the cement of the foundation of web three is still wet. Like it's still wet. Yeah, like I said, you, you may not have uh, got the first board apes, but we're still pretty fucking new here. You're still pretty much in the beginning. You're you're early. You know, you're not early for the early earlies, but you're early still, in my opinion. So I agree with that one hundred percent. Oh, everybody's now, early yeah, still. I still think I still think we're super early. Like I think that um, the you know the the best blue chip projects probably haven't even been thought of yet. So totally early. Right. And I and I'm still waiting for the Gary V says in 30 years, like this will be the most significant project in the space. So I don't know how he sees the timeline, but I'm a big Gary V guy. I'm a believer. I'm an optimist. So I'm ready to see fucking V friends overtake board apes. I'm just waiting for the day. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. I think that Gary is way ahead on the tech and, and he hasn't really tried to hype it up as much because of criticism. And um, I do think that the what they're doing is super significant when you think about being able to verify your nfts without connecting your wallet being being able to then enter zoom chats and um not even zoom chats uh, v friends chats you know because of that and i having to verify your your v friends tokens again i think that's really smart and and i think he's just ahead of the curve burn island is not just a, a, a way to to provide value, but it's also a story arc that he's created within the VFriends ecosystem. And I think that's being undervalued as well. So his big thing is story. And I think that that's gonna be the main thing. Intellectual property and story will be what NFTs are all about. Um, Board Apes is a little bit different because they the individuals control the IP, but I almost like I almost like it better that Gary's controlling the IP because he, he's got complete control and I trust him, right? <laughs> Yeah, I like I like both models. Like I said, you know, I respect each way, you know, people do things. We'll see how they come out. We'll see what in the long term is what's the best. But yeah, Gary's plan, I think, is to make be friends a household name. So there's like, you know, one on your toothpaste, one on, you know, your vitamins. That one already exists. One, you know, on your towels or something, you know, a, a 
all your clothes, obviously, those are already out, right? Like on your skateboard. Like I think that's one of the things too already, right? Like one of the special releases. So that and everything more, you know, your shampoo, like your your sneakers is already a thing. I'm like naming things. It's funny. Uh, your Nintendo, your like furniture might be V friends, anything, you know what I'm saying? So I agree with that a hundred percent. But what I want to ask you next, Tim is where, so we got the vector bot uh, part of vector bot, Tim. What about the Tim part? You're a teacher. Um, why, why are you a teacher? I don't know. I honestly, I went to college to be a teacher and then I changed my major to be an artist. And then I ended up being an artist for a little while. And then I was like managing a, a grocery store for a while. And then when I moved to North Carolina, they didn't, you didn't have to have a teaching degree. You just had to have a college education to be um, a teacher. And then you could work towards getting um, certified. It was called lateral entry. And it wasn't until I was 34 that I started teaching. Um, but I just, I just naturally took to it. I just really enjoy it, like teaching and explaining things. Um, I don't know why, but I just, it's fun for me. So yeah, I, I think I just, you know, and especially when you're talking about understanding and acceptance, it's, it's like, we need to understand that it like when someone picks on you, like that's because they're dealing with something like we need, that needs to be taught. Like that when, when you're getting picked on or you're getting shoved or it's the person doing the shoving, it's the person who's blowing out the candle. That's really the one hurting and in trouble. And the, the more education we can have around that, the better. I think that just is a conversation that just needs to be talked about. And Gary talks about that a lot too. So you got in through lateral entry, which sounds a little seductive to me. I like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like once you got in and became a teacher, what, what did you find like were the challenges and the struggles? Like you're, you're kind of like touching on it. Like, so like bullying, right? Um, like, have you, have you witnessed bullying? Um, do you try to like never witness bullying because it's like, hopefully you prevent it. Like what, it, what is your response as a teacher to bullying? And also if you could incorporate in there, what, what like grade level or like, what are you teaching at the moment? Oh, I, I haven't been teaching since, um, November, 2021. Um, I resigned teaching so that I could pursue web three full time. And then I, um, had, then I went and worked for NFT NYC a month later and I've been working for them full time ever since. Um, but when I was teaching, I was teaching, uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Dreamweaver, Microsoft Office, which is like, you know, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, um, general basic technology, safety and computers. Uh, so like, you know, just I had to get kids certified in various tests. So I'm myself certified in like 15 different programs and I was teaching classes to get kids certified in like six. And um, so, and then, okay. So then what was like the bullying that you oh, kind of gosh, saw or witnessed? Yeah, well, or did you, and thank you for clarifying. No, you're not no, currently yeah, a teacher. No, I, I, but, I'm um, trying to get back into teaching, but like teaching in, you know, in this type of format. Um, yes. I, Oh, geez. Sorry, you're going to have to explain the question again because I lost it. I'm, I'm so... nah, you're good. I'm, we're all over the place. That's how I roll. Um, so, like, what is a situation, uh, like, while you yeah. were teaching where you saw a kid get bullied or you tried to prevent it or something where you kind of had to step in so, or act okay. in some way? Yes. Um, well, I did have a transgender student, and that was a difficult thing. This is I've had multiple transgender students, and it's difficult for uh, other students to use the correct pronouns. Um, or to, to, you know, hold back when they want to say something that's smart aleck. But um, when it comes to bullying, um, it, this was zero tolerance for me. Like, I'm a very tolerant teacher, but when certain words are said, then it's immediately, you know, you're out of this classroom type deal. And this, and um, this so to clarify, tolerance. this is the same age, like first, first, second grade kind of student here? Oh, this is, no, this is um, high school. This is like uh, oh, this is older. Okay, 9 sorry. through 12. Oh, grade. I thought you said some of the students were as young as six. Um, no, no, I did teach. Oh, I'm sorry. Students. I must've misheard no. something you said before. No. I'm so sorry. No, you're Continue. good. Ninth through 12th grade. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, interesting that, you know, the, the, the biggest thing to, one of the biggest things to me that I found surprising was, um, like someone, uh, a, a, a black student picked on another black student for being too dark. And I was, that, that was like, wow, I can't believe there's like racism inside of a, inside of a you know inside of a culture like that and i didn't really realize that that was actually a thing and being too dark or too light you know but light skin um black kids would tell me the same thing that they would get picked on and be called like steph curry or like 
just being like picked on for being too light and it's like oh my goodness this is you know there's a lot of that going on like a lot of of the you know what people wore if their shoes weren't cool enough that kind of picking on like if if someone smelled bad because maybe they didn't get to take a shower as often right that type of thing's happening um you know but really the biggest thing that i saw was people just being sad about themselves and not not sticking up for themselves and like feeling like they couldn't be themselves that 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 more than anything um was what was hard getting someone to get motivated right because a lot of the kids had it in them but they didn't have the drive to do it they just were like it doesn't matter if i do this or not and trying to get them to make it matter that was the hardest thing and I think I think this would be a yes. Would you say some of the stories that or situations that you saw while you were teaching found their way into an inspiration for you? And that's kind of what called you to attention or called you to action that like, I got to do something about this, not just in the moment, but on this bigger level to the point where you were like, I'm actually going to leave teaching, not because I don't want to teach anymore. And that's why you still got teacher in the bio because you still identify as a teacher because you're like, I need to teach it even like a larger and expanded level because it's, it's, I'm sure it's not just my school. I'm sure it's all across the country, maybe all across the world. Kids are dealing with this and I gotta, I gotta take the lessons that I gave to the kids in front of me and I gotta get them to every kind of kid that I can in that situation. Is that, am I hearing that right? That's exactly right. Yeah. I want to scale that. Right. Um, and that's really the point of the vector bots is to sort of tell those stories and, and, and scale that type of thinking right there. But I'll tell you, man, it's just, there's a lot of kids in the world that just aren't getting the attention that they need and just listening to kids and like letting them know that that other people going through the same thing with these types of stories is, uh, you know, is really helpful, I think, in the long run. And so like really the content to me, the content of what we taught in public school was not that important. Um, getting these kids certified. Sure. You know, that's great for them, but like, you know, different things, like not as important as like learning how to be confident in yourself, learning how to find something that you love to do as your work, learning how to be um, independent, right? Learning how to find friends, learning how to find people with like interests. Like these are types of things that are difficult for a lot of people to deal with. And, and not a lot of people are as outspoken as me. Like I'm, a, I'm always out here just asking questions and looking like an idiot. A lot of people are afraid. Uh, especially in a setting like that. So my idea, you know, when I was in the classroom was to look like a huge idiot so that everybody else was really comfortable. And, you know, and they felt like they could be an idiot too, because really um, that's how you get something done. You have to, you have to be willing to look like an idiot, <laughs> especially if you've never done it before. So that's all learning is, is looking like an idiot until you don't look like an idiot anymore. <laughs> I agree on that, man. I'd always rather someone tell me I'm wrong because that's the day I never have to be wrong again. You know, that's the day you learn. Absolutely. I'd always rather look like an idiot for a moment to not have to look like an idiot the rest of my fucking life or however fucking long that I won't look, like know that shit because I didn't ask. Um, so I feel you on that, bro. And at some point in my life, I found the courage to be that person. Early on in life, I couldn't even order a fucking taco if my parents told me they'd pay for everything at Taco Bell if I just asked the guy at the counter. And I was like, I don't, I can't fucking, I'm going to starve. I'll just never eat again. That's, I don't have to eat. How bad do I have to eat? You really need me to talk to that guy? I'm not fucking talking. So That's, I wouldn't I'm even be able to do it for my own. about that because my wife has the same type of thing, you know, like not just having anxiety to go talk to a stranger like that. That's a real thing. And a lot of people deal with that, man. So I'm glad that you brought yeah, that it up. is. And like I said, I grew out of it, but I, I was on a space with another V friends yesterday and she was doing an interview with her daughter. She was talking about like how she's like succeeding in the martial arts and this and that. And she's like, yeah, I'll whoop your ass, but I'm a little scared still to uh, <laughs> order at the counter, you know, like, yeah. So it's a big thing for people. So where, where the fuck did you get that courage? How did you, how did you end up with the courage, the luck, the, you know, the fortune to be that guy? Yeah. Um, I was bullied a lot in high school, um, a ton. I, uh, yeah, the, and it was tough for me going through. And um, it wasn't until, like, I got into college and got away from it and was kind of, like, my own person. And I wasn't, like, this person's cousin or so-and-so's brother. I was just me, and I was able to, like, you know. And then the ladies started to take notice of Tim Livingston, and I got some confidence as well. So there was that. But, you know, I think confidence is a huge thing and just being able to, um, you got to find that somehow. And I don't know how, you know, it's different for everybody, but for me, it was going to Buffalo and seeing the diversity and being on my own and uh, learning how to deal with that, you know, because I was from a small town, which, 
you know, there was more cows than people. And I, it, it was like, it was just a, a, a complete 180 of my life and I had to adapt. And so um, it was a good thing because I did, you know, I was able to kind of like be myself for the first time where I really didn't feel like in high school that I had the, the confidence to be myself. Yeah, I totally understand that. I could relate to that. My my voice, I started to find it. I went to like a, a not a sleepaway, but a summer camp one year, and like I was like, you know, I wasn't the kid that got picked on at school necessarily. There, like, you know, I was just whoever. And kids were, I guess, nicer to me at summer camp, and I kind of became this other person. And one year came back to school, and it was kind of like not a hundred percent, but that was like the planting of the seed. And then, yeah, definitely getting out to like college and just like right, the more space you kind of have. And then, and then it's like the people you're speaking up against don't live next to you kind of thing that helps a little bit too. Um, so I agree with that. Now you could definitely shrug this off. You could say, no, if it's not comfortable, we don't push boundaries on the show, but do you feel comfortable talking about any of the times you got bullied or why, or how you got through it at the time? Sure. I'll talk about it. It's totally fine. I, um, okay. So one time, uh, I asked my friend to ask this girl out for me. Right. And so don't ever do this. I mean, by the way, if you're going to ask a girl out, you just go up to them and ask them. Because when you ask your friends, sometimes they lie to you and tell you that the girl said yes. And then they save a spot for you next to her at the lunch table. And then the other friend tells you that this, your new girlfriend wants you to sit next to her. And then it's pizza day and you got an extra slice. And you're like, I'm going to give my new honey this extra slice. So you get up and you move over to this new table. And then everybody at the table gets up and leaves. And that's one of the worst moments of my life. And so, you know, like you know dealing with that and dealing with different instances like that um through high school you know I was sort of like really scrawny and small and my friends were bigger and they were like the really popular kids and I was sort of like the butt of the joke the guy that got beat up and pushed around a little bit so that's kind of like my story of you know in high school I had like a pretty demeaning nickname which I don't really want to talk about but you know that's you know that's really what it was um so sort of just kind of being not bullied by my friends. I don't want to say, you know, like, but, you know, being that guy that was kind of like the butt of the joke. Yeah, I get that. And you don't don't have to say anything. Like I said, you don't want to say leave that name in the past. Let it die out with the years in which it was said kind of thing. Um, do you have any, like, so like right now, like, do you have any like specific, um, tools or methods? Like, like, do you encourage like meditation, journaling, anything of that nature? For me, I, I'm a big fan of like release, right? And so positive release in some sort of way, either that a lot of times for me, that's music and being able to play um, guitar uh, or create art, right? So, um, or sometimes just talking about things. So like, I'm a big fan of just like getting it out. And if I feel a certain type of way, like you're going to know about it. So I think um, for me, that's that those are really the keys, just kind of finding that outlet. So you don't keep things inside, right? You don't want to have that, that feeling of anger towards somebody or like you had a bad day and you got you, you're just feeling some type of way. If, if I'm having a bad day or something, I'll pick up my guitar and I'll play something like really anger, <laughs> angry and like get it out, you know, so it, or I'll draw something and get my mind off it. So I think it's a more like, um, those are my main coping mechanisms. And it's just different ways of talking about things that aren't talking right it's playing music but you're emoting you're or you're drawing but you're emoting these emotions you're getting them out i agree with you that's so important is the release and the getting it out and the negativity just like being purged from your body people believe different things some people think this is kind of meta science but now there are more articles showing that there is a like more scientifically method proven um demonstrated way that what you're feeling really does physically affect your cells and it's on different levels. Like one of one of the more obvious levels is there's something called a somatoform uh, disorder or psychosomatic, I believe. And that's like if you in your and this is different than hypochondriac where you think you're sick, but you're not. This is you think you're sick and you think you're sick enough that like you give yourself a cold, like you, you start worrying so much and you get so anxious. It'll it'll negatively affect your body. It'll it'll depress your immune system. And then you will get sick just because you didn't feel good. Or if you're really depressed, you'll actually get sick because of that. Now, not everybody necessarily has it to that extreme degree, but there are studies showing that on smaller levels, like it does affect your mood. Like it'll it'll have a smaller, like 
um, negative impact for someone who doesn't have it that, that extreme, like the disorder, but you will not be as healthy when you're sad as when you're happy. And maybe that sounds crazy, but you know, you feel it like who's, who feels as healthy, sad as happy, you know? And there's, there's science to that. There's science coming to light about that. So whether it's guitar or painting or actually talk, you know, you said there's a lot of ways you could do not talking, whatever it is, you could do talking, you could do not talking, you could do exercise, but you got to do something. You got to do something so that emotion still isn't like all pent up inside of you. Cause in the worst case scenario, like, yeah, like you could get a cold, you could get sick, you could get cancer. Like it could literally like be poisoning your body. Um, so I think it's important to say that now, let me ask you when you were working in the school, did they have like people to talk to if people if kids did want to talk like do they have like a guidance counselor a psychologist kind of thing do you know okay they they don't really right i mean they do i, I don't want to say that public schools don't have psychologists and they don't have like guidance counselors because they do but these guidance counselors and these psychologists their job is their number one job is not to do counseling right that's a very very rare um the psychologist's number one job is to test kids to see if they qualify for services and then a guidance counselor's job is mostly to place kids in the right classes and get them in the right curriculum. And so, yes, there are some, but it's just so like working in education. It's just, it's just tough that there, there, there's not enough resources for these kids if you want to be real about it. And um, when you're talking about social emotional stuff, um, a lot of them won't even say anything um, as well. So, I mean, there are, if they reached out, there would be, things for them but there isn't anything on the other side that's reaching towards them if that, if that makes sense yeah i get it. it's not a lot of outreach it's kind of like yeah we're here if you like come and knock on the door and if we're not here you come back and like, i mean if you threaten maybe to leave kill note, somebody like, still come back you know one more mean? time like you're gonna get talked to by the psychologist you know what i mean like if you're talking about some stuff like you know what i mean if you there's some there's some kids with some dark things that that they you know they definitely get talked to, but that's only on the extreme cases. I wish that there was just more instances where there was just check-in periods where you could just, you know, uh, red, yellow, green, how you feeling type deal, you know? Right. Like you could request it, or maybe you could just do like a 15 minute chat during like a lunch, or you could like eat a sandwich in there with them or something for a whole lunch. That's yeah. Crazy. That would be nice if it's not there. So given, given it's not, and I agree, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think it was widely available in my school either. I'm sure some are better than others. Um, do you like either as part of vector bots or as part of a teacher, like, uh, do you advocate for that? Like, do you, do you like tell parent? Cause it could be a hard conversation to have with parents. Sometimes you don't want to like tell them there's something wrong with their kid. You could get someone inflamed, but you don't want to not help. So like, is there a way you could get that out? Or you, would, would you tell the kids? Would you tell the parents? Would you give them a pamphlet? Which is like, I feel like that never works, but you know, what, what would you do? So you'd be surprised how few parents are actively engaged in their kids' lives, especially on the high school level. Usually the kids' parents that are, like, super engaged in their kids' lives are the kids that are, like, already doing super, super good in school. And they're doing that well because their parents are, like, helping them and guiding them. And that's a big focus in their family life. Um, so, like, what, what I would advocate for and what I will advocate for when I go on this tour is that this is what students need to hear regularly in the classroom. Whether that's the math teacher or the science teacher or the Photoshop teacher, or the gym teacher, or the principal, or the school psychologist, they should all be aligned on the same thing. And that is that your social emotional well being is important, right? Um, you can't learn if you're not comfortable. That's like, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you if you have a if your stomach is empty, and you are, you, know, you are starving, you are not going to learn anything, right? You need to be fed. You, if you're in a cold room, and you're freezing, you're not going to learn anything. You need to be in an environment that's conducive to learning. And so, you know, um, you need to also create that environment with the culture and, and how you talk about these types of things. And I think that can be done with the teachers themselves, but it's a lot of work. And that's why VectorBots will help facilitate that with these free lessons. Yeah. And I love that again, that it's, it's something you did as a teacher. It's something you're doing through vector bots. It's something you're trying to scale where you are scaling from a smaller level to a larger level. Now, this is touching back again a little bit earlier to uh, early life, Tim. Now, I know after you got your degree in teaching, you kind of wavered and you were like, 
did a few different things, but you got the degree in teaching if I'm hearing it right. So what, what like made you want to be a teacher? Like, I know you didn't always want to be, and then you fell back into it, but what made you want to be in the first place? Like as a, as a kid or before you went to college? Yeah, I think, um, just sort of, uh, it, when you're a kid, like the only thing you know is school, right? So when I the allure to me was like, oh, this is the same type of system that I know. I you know I get the weekends off. I know what school is like. I could be a teacher, right? Um, and I and I was like a school like a recreation counselor, and I like worked with kids. And I'm like the youngest of seven, so I've got like a bunch of um, you know nieces and nephews. So we've always been around younger kids. So I was you know teaching them you know it was kind of natural so yeah I just I kind of gravitated that way but then I, I never took an art class until I was in college so when I you know when I took the shift from taking classes about education to taking art classes um I was just like I just did it because I was just following my gut and following my passion for finding art for the first time at like what 19 20. I love to hear. So it's, it's largely the passion uh, in art. That's kind of the root of it. That's that's the deeper passion. Yeah. Like like I get, you don't have to separate them. But if you did, would you put like uh, art above teaching, or would you equal them? I would put art above teaching because um, that's how I that's how I deal with life, right? Uh, and I think you can do both of them. I think they're conducive to be together. You can teach. They say you can't teach how to be creative, but you can you can teach how to think creatively. I think. Yeah, I agree. Creative creativity is a certain spark, and you know, you, not everyone may have it or something. But you, you're not not creative at all if you don't. And there's definitely ways you could build it, uh, build the skill. And if you're obsessed with it, you know, obsession often beats out raw talent anyway. So I agree with you 100. percent Now, the vector bots, I believe, I think we said were partially inspired by Rare Robot or you know, love of robots. Now. I think I saw something, if I'm remembering correctly, on your post where you said before Vectorbots, you were big into like line work or like abstract line work. Am I right about that? Yeah, thank you for noticing that. I've, I've, my art style has always been very abstract and line based. And I've always drawn these like line drawings and patterns and shapes that never really had a form. You know, they didn't really take, everyone would be like, oh, what is that? And I'd be like, oh, it's a line, you know? Um, and that was like kind of my biggest criticism towards my work is it didn't really represent anything. Yeah, I more represented feelings and emotions, right, in a in a in a line form. And what the robots have done is they've actually they've given me something that I can something that actually is something in the end, right? But still incorporates all my zany line work and my my intricate um style, which I think is stands out. Yeah, I, I love it. I love the line work. I, I myself am an artist. Uh, you know, my nine to five kind of thing is I fix computers, but I'm trying to, you know, or I, I have a streetwear brand. I, I, I'm i willing myself to get to the point where that's the main job. But I started off in lines too. I, I was doing like lines and shapes in the side of a notebook before one day, you know, someone kind of gave me the nudge, like, you know, why don't you put that on a canvas? And I'm like, nah, there's just shit I do next to my notes. And someone was like, you ever see like, you know, the abstract and this, and then I'm looking at like these thousand dollar paintings that look like the shit in my notebook. And I'm like, people pay for this. Like, this is just colors and shapes and shit. Like, and they're like, yeah, but some people love that. Like there's emotion in there. And I'm like, okay, like maybe I should take it more seriously. So I, you know, then I started putting it on clothes, uh, clothes. I started putting on clothes on canvases on all these different things and you know people did like it so you know not to the point where i quit my day job like i said but people are noticing people like it so i love that kind of commonality i love when there's like these little synchronicities or coincidences with the guests where we don't know it before we get on and somewhere in the hour we find like oh shit like i see me and you you see you and me like we we both are like line guys that kind of found form and then i too found a point where it was all just lines and then you know i would try to make certain characters and i don't have a whole like characters but it's kind of an idea for me too like to maybe brainstorm an nft project or to just tell a story with characters or just start with a smaller story maybe even not to do a big thing but just kind of get the taste for it because i'm a writer as well i like writing poetry and like short stories sometimes and that type of stuff so you know i'm definitely vibing out with everything you're saying here i'll have to send you a couple things just so you see what i'm talking about no, like I've seen with my lines and stuff send it. please send it because um yeah yeah, 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 yeah your really... lines are more chunky and like they're like oh they're, they're chunky they're they're fun. Fun. <laughs> i know they, dude yours are crisp and clean but yeah mine, it's a little bit it's different, but mine is the most incredible 
thing. Everything is line. Like you try to define what it is. I, I just think that that's a whole like really uh, the fact that you're vibing online like that just makes me real excited because that's really like one of my focal points as an artist is really like what line can be, what it is, and what it can be used for. Because lines used to create pattern, lines used to create form, lines used to create a lot of different things. And so I think it's I think it's the one of the most important fundamentals to art. Yeah, man. And my experience, and you could tell me yours, please. But my experience is similar to what you said, I think, if I'm hearing it and relating it right. But I'm putting my fucking emotions into those lines, bro. So some of my friends who aren't art, they're more like athletic, not super art people. Uh, I've gotten comments from them like, bro, it just looks like fucking scribbles. Like, what the fuck? Anyone could fucking scribble like that. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I used to think that about it, too, before I took it seriously. But, like, the more I get into it, every single line is an emotion. Like, I'm not, I don't see something in my head beforehand and then go, this is what the finished thing is look like this is what the finished picture is going to look like. Now let me put down all the lines. No, I'm everything. And just like my podcast, bro, like sometimes you make a quote unquote mistake. Okay. That's it. It's in the live recording. There are no mistakes, bro. There's no mistakes in life. You can't edit out shit in life. So I like to embody that philosophy that Bruce Lee of like, what's your ultimate form. And Bruce Lee's like, my ultimate form is to have no form. Cause like he just wants to react in the moment. He doesn't want to be constrained by form or be thinking of a move ahead of time. He wants to be in the moment and just move the way the moment takes him. So I'm like, bro, I love that. I love that shit from Bruce Lee. So I do my podcast that way. I live my life kind of that way. And I do my art that way. Like, yeah, there's things I plan ahead. I don't think you should never plan ahead. I think that sounds a little reckless, but like a lot of your plan should just be knowing that life is a, there's only the now life is a connection and nows. there's no past and future really. Like that's in your head. Like you're only living now and you got to be adapt. The plan, some part of the plan should be really getting good at handling the now things in the moment because you can't always plan ahead. So no, like, I love that. You can't plan, oh. uh, dude, the fact yeah, that that's how you do your drawings and you draw like that, that's exactly the same the way that I do it. Um, it's like, yes, you, that's what I was asking. You're not like, are you going straight from the emotion? The line. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one that's crazy like that. It makes me feel good. Oh, dude. And I don't know if you heard about this, but um, I think it's called a semic writing or a semic art. It's actually someone, someone brought this to me. It was um I think on my Instagram one of my followers after like you know liking whatever they were like they were like you're one of the like coolest to make artists I've seen I said I don't think so what the fuck <laughs> I was like what the fuck is that I don't know I don't know what that is and then I looked it up but it's it's people who write from like intuition or feeling that don't have a process like in the moment or a picture in the head in the moment and they're just expressing straight from soul or source or the universe or intuition or your feelings or your heart whatever there's all different ways people describe it but it, apparently it's called acemic writing and i'm like okay <laughs> i i guess we're both uh acemics yeah i think that's the best way to do it. i think a lot of people get stuck in their head and that stops them from doing and they're worried about it being perfect and the best thing to do is just to do it and then and then if you want to change it you can change it like there are no rules right if I wanted to come out tomorrow and be like, you know, I'm going to go to a hundred schools instead, or, you know, I, I need to adjust this roadmap because of this or that reason. Like, as long as you're transparent with what you're doing, um, it's just a learning process. You see it all the time. Um, Project Pivot, right? Uh, Porsche came out with an NFT um, and then they didn't mint well. So they closed the mint and then it like three X its floor price. So like there's things that people can do in the moment to make, um, you know, the changes. And I think you're right. People need to, just go ahead and live in that moment and, 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 and be, you know, be open to failing and be open to be able to change things. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Go with the flow, become the flow, be the flow, go around up above through your obstacles, find some sort of way, but keep on flowing, keep on going, living in the moment. Now, the last uh, 10 minutes or so here, I always get, uh, give to the guests to do if you want like a call to action. So we've definitely explained to people what VectorBots is. So we've given the value. We've given the explanation. It's not an empty shill. It is a valuable self-promotion. Do you want to like, you know, just kind of highlight again, shout out like links, relevant dates, just kind of like hone it down on the bullet points so people know, you know, what you're doing and how to get in and when and where, you know, link free, that type of thing. Thank you very much. Yeah, if you want to check out the website, it's vectorbots.io. I'm going to be launching on the two-year anniversary of VFriends, which is May 5th, 2023. I will be on stage on NFT NYC with Craniac and Maha, talking about IP and NFT stuff, uh, brands. I'm going to be at NFT Miami Week speaking at the end of the month here, and then I will be at VCon. I hope to speak there, but you never know. We'll see. 
Um, but definitely going to have a presence in VCon. And if you want to know anything about the project, just hit me up. Um, I'm happy to open the Discord for anybody who's not in. I keep it closed because I just don't, I, like I said, I want it super secure. But I'm, I'm willing to let folks who want to come in there and, and, and hang uh, the link. But yeah, vectorbots.io and just uh, keep an eye. If you have a vectorbot currently, you'll be able to double, you know, whatever you mint. So that's going to be great. Um, if you don't, you know, stay tuned for the public mint. And that should be May 5th. Get your, get your ETH ready, 0.05555. I, I got there we I go. Actually five, got a DM. Someone was like, are you doing too much Gary stuff? And uh, I, I don't know. I'm just, I, I hope it doesn't come across that way. I, I really want it to be like um, an homage to him, not, not a copycat thing, just like it's always been with the um, vector bots and the rare robot, you know. So it's a fine line to walk. Um, but this is, you know, V Friends is kind of where I started. So I've got a lot of love for everybody here. Fuck yeah, bro. I don't know if you could do too much Gary stuff in my book. I'm probably the wrong person to ask if you look at my wallet. I'm I'm not a I'm not an unbiased judge. But especially with the fucking fives, bro. Like I heard very recently, I think. I don't think I knew it. Like I knew the story, but I didn't quite get, get that it was like connected to the five. But my understanding is the five is the number on the jersey his mom knitted for him as a kid that when he buys the jets he is going to put this fucking jersey in a shrine in front of the stadium to be like from fucking not being able to uh, afford a jersey to owning the whole goddamn fucking thing so bro that's that's a great fucking concept like even if you don't like gary v for some reason bro like what do you like fucking hate success at all like bro that's a great dream like put someone else's name on it it's still a great fucking dream like so the five thing bro and so that's like homage to like entrepreneurs that's homage to gary's mother that's homage to like family love respect like dr dreaming the big impossible dream bro remembering where you fucking come from and your roots so like yeah it's a gary thing but it's also like fucking like gary it's not just it's not a gary thing it's a thing gary's doing that's actually all these other things bro it's not like you fucking you know are rocking like his haircut every day or you're giving all the vector bots like they don't look like gary v bro like that would be then i'd be like yeah i don't know bro if you're doing gary bots that's a that's a little heavy gary i love gary i don't know i don't know if you maybe just keep it vector bots maybe don't do gary bots maybe one gary bot like a gary b but you know what i'm say like no so i don't i don't personally think the uh the fives is too much i fucking love the fives personally um thanks man yeah and you, you, get, it about it. you get it too I don't right? um the only other reference Sorry, uh you get it you get it about what i'm trying the only other reference would be yeah, um, get it, baby. <laughs> on the same day on the anniversary of uh of a man, but I'm gonna I'm gonna sell out on Mint Day. I'm like I'm like be friends. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I gotta have some big dreams. Hell yeah. <laughs> Now, Tim, let me ask you, you know, the people, they can reach out to you about VectorBots and the project. You could definitely say no. Again, no boundaries pushed. Do you feel comfortable? Can we can we tell people if they just think like, bro, I was listening to the podcast and I don't know if I'm like a VectorBots guy, but I, I think I'm a fucking Tim Livingston guy. I think Tim is cool as fuck. I like his vibe. I like his passion. I like him as a teacher and artist. Like, can people just say what's up to you? Can they ask you like a oh, yeah. little bit of life advice, general shit like that? Like yeah. that type of thing? Can they reach out to you for that? Anytime. Um... I've been in the VFriends community for, you know, since men, um, open and willing to help anybody um, with anything that they need. You know, there's, there's people I see in the crowd here uh, that have supported me and helped me, you know, with questions about MetaMask and questions about my ledger and different things like that. So anytime that you need help, um, like I would say, just reach out so you can join the Discord so that you can, you know, if I'm not available, somebody else, there's a lot of amazing folks that are in there and can connect in there. Um, and I hope to provide a lot of value in that discord as we move on. But yeah, I'm, I'm open to, to helping anybody. They don't have to own a V friend. They don't have to own a vector bot. Um, you know, they just have to ask. You don't got to own a V friend to be a V friends. You don't got to own a vector bot to be friends with vector bot, Tim or a vector bots or however you want to identify, which is however you want, which is part of the project. And I fucking love it. So Tim, I've, I've been loving this conversation here. We are nearing down to the uh, final four minutes on the hour. I do my best to keep it consistent-ish, not go over too much. Um, before, you know, we kind of close out or move to anything, we have a lot of people in the audience. I don't know if, you know, anyone has a question. I don't always do guests, but there's a lot of people here, and you talked a lot about your project. So if you want to open it up to a question, if someone does a hand raise, we could get that in. Um, or if not, if you have any, I don't see anyone coming, any emojis, so we're probably good on that. But uh, if not, any any last words, and I, and I know I, you know, I gave you the spotlight, but if you have any last word, mic drop. If not, you know, we'll close out. 
yeah, I would just say thank you so much for like giving me an opportunity to tell my story. And it's, it's amazing to, to be able to be part of this community, this bigger community, um, the V friends community and the NFT community. So um, I can't wait to meet you at, at VCon. I assume you're going to be there, right? 100%. Heck yeah. I can't wait to hang out. And so, um, yeah, the, the it, we're just getting started. Just like we said earlier, this is just a, the start of our friendship together. And I can't wait to meet you all, all you guys who are going to be there and uh, let's fucking go. Let's fucking go, bro. And one thing on that, that came to my mind as you're saying that um, it's funny, bro. Cause you're Tim Livingston, right? And who's the fuck is Tim Livingston is a thought I once had. Why? I had it in the response to everybody telling me, Tim Livingston's really great, man. Do you know Tim Livingston? Bro, I feel like you would get along with Tim Livingston. Oh, dude, like, dude, are you doing shit with lines? You should check out Tim Livingston. Like, a lot of, he does a lot of line stuff. It's different than yours, but like, dude, he's really cool. Do you know Tim Livingston? I don't like, who the fuck is Tim Livingston? <laughs> so now I've answered that question. I now know who Tim Livingston is. And bro, I, I believe them. It's all my closest friends. I'm like, shit, like, whoever the fuck this guy is, I guess we're going to be friends. I got to, I got to, uh, I got to introduce myself <laughs> or something. For sure, man. Fucking names keep coming up positively, only positively. I'm like, shit. This guy must be fucking great. Well, I think that's the power so, of NFTs, I agree. right? I think that's the power of like Gary bringing everybody these like minds together. And I've I haven't seen kindness like I've seen this community. I've been an artist a long time. I've I've done a lot of logos. I've done a lot of graphic design. Um, I've never been paid for it the way that I've been paid for it here in this space uh, by this group of people. And um, really thankful that I found it. Fuck yeah, baby. So. If today, you know, before today, and I and I knew more of an answer than today, but today, you know, we really vibe. If you're if you're wondering who the fuck Tim Livingston, he's fucking great. He's an awesome guy. He's a teacher. He's an artist. He's a creator. He's the leader of VectorBots. He's putting information and lessons and inclusivity out to the people. And I definitely recommend you at least follow him, bro. Do do that at the minimum. That's I don't know how you could not do that. And check out VectorBots. You know, if you got the money in your wallet, great. You know, give it a give it a shot, maybe. You know, I'm I'm gonna think about it. I just had a baby, so every fucking financial decision is like a hour conversation with my wife about what we can and can't afford. But you know, not not exactly. But I'm just saying we got to tighten down. I I want to get in VectorBot, so I can't 100 percent commit. But you, you got Listen, me fired got, up about I got, it. I'm gonna I, have some minted. To I my hope wallet. other people feel the same I, I, I way. I got VectorBot for you, regardless of how it shakes out. You will get a VectorBot. Trust me. All right. Fuck yeah. So that makes me ah. Oh, now I feel like I have to. No, shut up. You have to work out the funds. You're too fucking nice. When people are nice, it makes me want to give. I do the marketing that way. No, uh, seriously. Uh. I don't don't want anyone to get overextended. I I don't want anybody who feels like they want to be a part of it that they can't. Um, I do have some OG Mint badges if you want one. I can, that's on the original contract. I can send you, which will give you the pre-mint. And then, you know, if you end up not minting one, uh, just hit me up because I'll have plenty. Um, I'm I'm minted, I'm going to mint 55 to myself. So I have plenty to give away. So um, listen, I'm Kowski.eth. I'll never say no to a premium. Exactly. Exactly. You're the man, dude. Thank you so much for having this space. I can't wait. Like it's VCon is right around the corner, man. We're gonna be there talking in person before yes, we it go. Is. So I'm I'm really bullish on that. I'm gonna give you a big fucking hug, bro. Oh, yeah. So fuck yeah. We're looking forward to VCon. If you're going, you'll see us both there. We got hugs to go around. We got passion. We got positivity. We got life lessons. We are going to close it out. So I want to thank everybody who's listening in the space. If you really got some value, you enjoyed it. I would love it if you liked it, shared it, retweet it, told your friends, told your cousins, told your grandma, told the kid down the street, told the mailman if you see him, or the milkman if you still got one. Who the fuck has those? I don't know. But tell them about the Talking About Life podcast if you enjoyed it. If not, don't do any of that shit, bro. Don't do shit that's not genuine, bro. I represent, you know, authenticity. So only if you liked it. Um, we also like to, you know, kind of come out the way we came in. So we thank God in the universe, for the magic that brings everybody here, gets us all together, making life happen itself. We also thank the guests in addition to the listeners. So Tim, you said, thank you to me. You're welcome. Thank you. Right fucking back, bro. This was a dope fucking hour. I love jiving. I love the energy. This gets me fired up. You know, now I'm in a good mood for the rest of the, probably the whole fucking day, bro. I'm all charged up, you know, might even go into tomorrow. Who knows? Might be a whole fucking week or it might take me to Monday, bro. We'll see. But For those who are not all charged up like me, I got a little energy to give to y'all. And that's a message from our friend Afakasi Brand, who runs the Barber Shape, sorry, the Barber Shop spaces on Twitter. Also, I believe he's got it on Spotify now. And that message is important because it's if you haven't heard it today, you are loved, folks. There is light and dark in the universe. We definitely talked about that on the show. But what creates life? One way to look at it is love creates life. 
kind of like literally to some extent, you know? So maybe love created a big bang. I mean, the language between love and banging, it's right there. I don't know how you ignore it. So love, love creates life, the big bang, it creates people. And not only are you loved, you are the conscious force of love walking around. You are, you are love incarnate. You yourself are love. But if you haven't heard it today, you are loved.